NFL Week 10, we got Sunday Night Football, Primetime Jets, Raiders, another primetime game for the Jets. Schedule makers definitely expected this Jets team to be led by Aaron Rodgers and not Zach Wilson. Now, I had a best bet on the Raiders last week, and the main reason behind making that bet was simple. It's an old betting angle that's used in every sport. You simply bet on the team that just fired their head coach. It was originally made popular in baseball, but has since spread to pretty much every sport. Now, if the team who fires their head coach wins their next game after the firing, you bet them again until they lose. But that's only if you bet them the first game because you already have that money from the first game to play with. Now, I am concerned about the Raiders celebrating that win last week like it was the Super Bowl. Um, you know, Or was it celebrating the win after the firing of uh, jo uh, Josh McDaniels? That's what it seemed like they were celebrating him leaving. Whatever it is, they had the perfect opponent in the Giants that made them look a lot better than they are. Um, kind of wonder if this is a hangover spot here. Uh, plus, now they're facing a Jets defense that has made a lot of good quarterbacks look very bad. Last week, Justin Herbert finished with a 67 QB rating versus this Jets defense, and that's the best QB rating the Jets have allowed all season. They held Dak Prescott to a 66 rating, Hertz to a 65, Josh Allen to a 52, and Mahomes to a rating of just 48. These are all QBs that regularly finish games in the high 80s or low 90s for a QB rating. Now, how the Jets are able to do this is with pressure, but the Jets blitz less than any other team besides the Colts. The Jets also um, have a top three pressure rate. This is something not many teams can do. Defensive tackle Quentin Williams is such a disruptor up front. Uh, he may not have like crazy counting stats like sacks or TFLs, uh, but that's because he draws double teams and triple teams and allows others to kind of get the glory. Um, this is what Aiden O'Connell is going to be up against. But um, O'Connell's shown he can throw the ball. And in my opinion, I think the Raiders actually have their QB of the future in this kid. Um, last week was only his second start. His first start, he got sacked eight times. So that's kind of a throwaway game there. Uh, last week, the Giants defense did a lot to try to confuse this young quarterback. Uh, and I thought O'Connell made a lot of good decisions. He was calling all pass protections. He looked good. But really, you know, what this play on the Raiders comes down to is sometimes like the X's and O's, trends and systems can all get thrown out the window when a team is playing inspired. Uh, the word came out about how bad former Raiders head coach Josh McDaniels was hated, not just by the players, but by the staff and the Raiders organization. With him gone, this seems like a rejuvenated team that loves their new coach and, you know, playing hard for him. I'm sure a lot of their motivation comes from wanting to show everyone that the reason they stunk was McDaniels. And the way they prove this is by winning without him. But then again, I'm sure even with McDaniels at head coach, uh, they would have still beat the G-Men and Tommy DeVito last week. My point is, though, all the all the analytics, you know, can't capture a team's motivation. And I think that's what we got here in this game. Raiders had eight sacks last week. Three of them was uh, by Max Crosby alone. Those are like high effort things. It's a tough game here, but uh, that's all I got for this one. Until next time, good luck with your bets.